We're here at the Olympic Trials for Australia in Penrith, and with me I do have bronze medal winner uh, Robin Bell. Robin, now you're here almost four years after your medal in Beijing. Does some of that feeling come back? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to see. I mean, I've just come out this year for Olympic selection. I, I've, I've missed probably all the other selection races in between. So, um, yeah, just come out and cheer the guys on and try and help out where I can. Yeah, it's good to watch and it's exciting, isn't it? When there's only one spot and, um, you know, it kind of adds to the level of excitement. So, and, and it makes selection a really good viewing. Yeah. Hey, yeah, at the course, I've already seen you, you know, helping out some people, giving them some advice. What do you tell them? How do you help people here, you know, at, at an important race like this one? Yeah, I mean, it is pretty hard. Like, yeah, you can help out a little bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've been keeping in contact with um, Kyan and Maley at the Aussie C1. I've been helping out Mike Dawson, the Kiwi kayak, um, on Skype and, and a bit on the phone. And, and um, you know, it's, it's hard turning up to one event, you know, and, and giving some advice. So I've kind of been chatting to those guys on the phone a little bit and, Kind of, if they've got some questions, I'm, I'm quite happy to answer them. But um, you know, it's it's hard, difficult when you got a new life to, to get down here and um, be available for coaching and things. So um, yeah, yeah, no, it's it's good, and those guys are doing well. So yeah, it's good. Yeah. So hey, if you look at today's races, um, what have you seen? Were, were there any surprises, or what struck you? Oh no, well, no surprises in C1. Tony Eston go, geez, he was doing that in 2000. Um, yeah, I mean, Jess Fox is yeah, outstanding, isn't she? I mean, she's 17. And uh, Michael Mardigan was 16, I think, when he got his first world's medal, 17 when he won the Olympics. And, um, you know, Jessica Fox has you know, taken it to the, the top girls in the world. I mean, you've got the reigning Olympic champion, reigning world champion and um, in the last two weeks, and she's, she's beaten them both. And, um, you know, it shows by the time, and she's on an improvement curve as well. Um, in consistency and also building up strength for herself. So by the time the Olympics come, come, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure she's she's got the ability to mix it up there, which would be great. Yeah. Hey, and tomorrow we've got the K1 for the men, yeah. C1 for the women, and the C2. Um, yeah, what do you expect? Yeah, I mean K1's an interesting battle. You got uh, Warwick won the first race in uh, two weeks ago, and. and You've got out of the Aussies, and then you've got um, Will won yesterday, so they've each got a win. So it really comes down to who wins um, uh, tomorrow. So the guys have got you know no excuses now. It comes down to first run in semi-finals, and you've got to um, at least try and make the final because um, you know if someone else makes the final, you want to at least have another shot. So it's about making sure that that one run in the semi-finals. Um, you know, it's solid and it's fast and um, you know, that's something that's really hard because it's a pressure cooker Olympic selection and then it doesn't get any easier when you go to the Olympics as well. Yeah. Hey, well, since you've been competing at the Olympic Games in Beijing, meanwhile also had, had they, they introduced C1 for women. Um, what do you think of that and, and yeah, what do you see as a development? Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. We've got to get more gender equality. And I don't know if that means making it sort of C2, you make it mix C2. or I mean, I don't, I don't really know. Um, probably a few Slovaks are screaming down, if they listen to this, screaming down the other end. But um, I, don't, I don't really know. You've got to make it. Um, how do you do that? Um, you can't just throw more people in ladies' kayak because you need more medals for the girls. Um, so C1 seems to be the natural answer and it's going to be a few years before that class really builds up and I mean Jess Fox, um, she does some great stuff in C1 um, but that's the thing is that they're so volatile, um, yeah, they do something great and then there's you know a massive mistake and then there's something great um, and the, you can see that in the times, um, you know there's, there's often 10 or 20 seconds between first and second and third um, but the only thing is that's going to improve and that's going to get tighter. So, you know, it might not be in um, London. I don't know if it's going to be in Rio, but, you know, you're looking at the, the next Olympics and the next Olympics after that, to hopefully they've got a competitive class so it can get into the Games. But um, at the moment, I, I suppose it's got, still got a fair way to go. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and two last questions where we try to, well, use your experience as a successful Olympian for as of tomorrow we know 
who the, the Olympians will become for Australia. Um, for those people, for those Australians, um, between now and the Olympic Games, be just before the start, what would you advise them, have, looking back at your own career, and how should they approach, how should they prepare, etc.? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the Olympics is... It's, it's such a different event compared to the world champs. I mean, that's why there's only one can go, and that's why it's so exciting. Um, I mean, how to prepare... You don't really have to do that much, like, in, in different years. Um, you know, you still... To go to the world, everyone's still training hard, and, and, you know, they're putting their life on hold and things like that. It, it's the same for the Olympics, but the thing about the Olympics is that... Um, it, it's just, uh, I, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to explain because um, it, it is slightly different. Everyone, once you're an Olympian, everyone wants to become one, um, you know, and, and once you're there, it, it's kind of like you've actually got to race well. And, and that at the end of the day, you're there to do a job. Um, there's no point in going around looking at the fancy lights and everything like that. At the end of the day, you've got to go there and do, do a job. And in Sydney, I was a bit... Um, annoyed I suppose because I, I came ninth and um, the year before I got a silver at the world champs and um, you know I felt like I went to the Olympics but I didn't do my job you know I, I didn't didn't do well and you know it, it ate away at me for quite a few years and then um, Beijing was uh, sorry um, Athens was the same I came fourth and I was annoyed because I thought you know I did a reasonable job and normally that puts me in the medals and I wasn't in the medals and uh, you know that ate away at me until Beijing so um, the Olympics you'll always remember. You will never forget what you do. And if you walk away from the field at the Olympics thinking, I didn't give it my all or I didn't do something, like you'll always regret it for the rest of your life. Where the World Champs has always won the next year. The World Cups has, might be won in two weeks or something like that. But the Olympics you'll, you'll never forget. It will haunt you for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and a last question. I've been told once by someone that maybe one of the secrets or su successful aspects might be to have once you're at the Olympic Games and once you're racing there to keep try trying to keep it and no as normal as possible don't make it hey, once you're on the water try to do your job as you maybe already said and don't make it too special for yourself as a m kind of mental preparation is that correct or what do you think yeah I mean there's a misconception that you have to do something special at the Olympics you don't um, the same race run that um, you know, Jessica, Jessica Fox just did this morning here um, and won that race. She just needs to repeat that at the Olympics. She doesn't have to do any more. I mean, you can look at Jackie Lawrence as a prime example of that. I mean, she probably paddled as well as she could you know, in terms of potential. Um, but the rest of the field really tried to push hard and they ended up falling over and, and Jackie Lawrence suddenly was you know, near the front there. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no point... Um, you don't need to push it. I mean, you ask Thomas Smith, who won in 2000, he won by six seconds, and you ask him, and he said, oh, look, I thought I had pretty solid runs, I didn't do anything special, yet he won by six seconds. And then he went to Beijing, and um, he came, I don't know, was eighth or tenth or something like that. But, um, you know, and you ask him, you know, what was the difference? And he said, oh, I thought I had to do something special, and I, and I pushed it, and I went beyond my means, and then a mistake started going into my paddling and everything like that and that just pushed him down the, the list. So it's still doing your job and, and doing the um, basics right. And um, I think it, it's, it's about doing a solid good run. You know? yeah. And the more you rack up at this time of the year and during World Cups, the easier it is to do at the Olympics. Um, you know, so there is a bit of a history of doing that. Um, however, you know, <laughs> you could be like a Jackie Lawrence and, and do it at, at, the, at the games. And, um, you know, that, that's the way it could be. But... Um, you know, when it comes down to it, you've got to perform.